Good morning. Uh, Anthony Jones joins us from Alabama A&M. A big win in the Magic City Classic for his Bulldogs uh, over the weekend. If you could, your coach, just kind of summarize that and then uh, look ahead to Alcorn State, and then we'll open it up for questions. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, as you said, it was a big win for us. Um, you know, it was, I thought it was um, a couple of uh, great weeks of uh, preparation on both teams. Uh, for both teams, uh, you know, it, it kind of started on, at the uh, uh, media events. Uh, a lot of guys were, you know, we got a chance to see a couple of their, their uh, student athletes. They got a chance to see a couple of hours. We talk a lot of respect for one another, um, uh, and that respect still stands. Uh, Coach Barlow had his team ready to go. The guys came out. We knew we were going to play hard. Uh, we were fortunate. Uh, we jumped out to an early lead, um, 17 to nothing. And um, and as I said to my guys, you know, these guys are championship caliber teams. You know, they want to be champions, and they'll come back, and they did. Um, you know, I spoke with uh, Coach Barlow at the uh, at the banquet, and I I spoke highly of. Uh, Dominguez, and uh, I hope I'm saying his name right, but um, this kid is, I thought he was, I, I think he's a heck of a football player. I don't know what happened to Jenkins, um, but um, he came in there and did a great job and um, you know, got his team back into it. And, you know, at halftime, we went in at halftime lead 17 to 6, but you can kind of see them gaining a little momentum. We came out in the second half, took the opening drive. Uh, End up taking like seven minutes off the clock, and had to settle for a field goal, and uh, that made it twenty to six. And, uh, and then uh, Alabama State continued to drive. They took that next series down and scored a touchdown, and they got the extra point. Uh, but before the half, I should go back and say we we were able to block a field goal. Uh, that place kicker has an excellent leg. But we Preston Nelson, one of our guys, came through, and something that we worked on, we were able to block a, a field goal right before the half. And again, we uh, now we going back to the second half and drove down and uh, took the opening drive and got a field goal. And now the score was uh, twenty to six. Then they went took their opening drive, but their, their next series down and was able to score a touchdown. And then it was twenty to thirteen. And we knew it was going. I knew it was going to be that uh, type of a football game. Uh, just a matter of time. Uh, a few things happened, a few exchanges, and then uh, in the fourth quarter, uh, Dominguez makes one heck of a play and takes off running and uh, goes about 60 yards plus for the possible scoring touchdown, I mean tying touchdown. Uh, and then once again, we were able to block the extra point, and it was a big deal. Uh, and we, you know, we went back and forth a few times, uh, and then um, we would take the uh, final five plus minutes off the clock and run the clock down and um and uh and that ended up being a difference in the ball game. Again it was the Mad City Classic. Uh it's kinda what we expected. Two teams wanting the same thing. Uh we were blessed and uh to be the team to come out on top uh this particular time. A lot of respect for that uh the Alabama State football team. Uh this upcoming week we play uh Alcorn State, uh Coach Spears and his group you know, we go on the road to play them, a uh, team we haven't had success against in a couple of years. Uh, we know they're going to be ready. Uh, you know, we're not looking at the record. I'm looking at how they're playing, and they're playing hard football. they got a big physical defense. Uh, they got some playmakers on the offensive side, special teams of sound. Uh, they got, I don't know his name yet, but that receiver, number two, can run. Um, and, uh, you know, we got to get ready for a football team that's very capable of uh, beating us. Um, I know people are going to ask about the emotional high of this past football game and all these kind of things. Um, you know, I said this a long time ago. Um, I didn't think anybody would go undefeated in the SWAC because, uh, you know, a lot of teams are that evenly matched. In any week, uh, anybody can be beaten. Uh, so um, this week here is no exception. we got to be ready for them. Uh, a good Braves football team. Thank you. Open it. Oh, I'm sorry, Coach. Go ahead. No, oh, no, that's it. Thank you. Uh, we'll open it up for questions for Head Coach Anthony Jones from Alabama A&M. Hey, Coach, 
Coach, that was Ty Miller from Sheridan Broadcasting. Good morning to you. Hey, good morning, Ty. Hey, Coach, Kadarius Lacey had a, had a huge game down the stretch when you needed to get the big runs down the stretch. Can you talk more about him and, 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 and how focused he was for that game? Well, I mean, he was focused. We, we had two weeks to get there. Uh, we talked, uh, you know, just about every day I would talk to him, uh, give him little messages about uh, the importance of the game, the importance of his play, uh, how important it was for him to be ready. Um, you know, they uh, they have, a, they have uh, they being Alabama State, have uh, a guy in the secondary that's one heck of a play. That's Riley. Uh, and then they all have a couple of corners that can really play, and they go, they're ball hawks is what I call them. And what we had to do is had to have a running game uh, to kind of take their best players out of the fold, you know. And uh, and then and what do we do? As soon as we, you know, we think we're settled, where we can make a few throws, um, he he picks us off. Riley picks us off. So we knew for us to have a chance being of winning this football game, we were going to have to be an aggressive running football team. And uh, we were able to do that early going. Uh, they made some mistakes. Um, and, um, you know, we, we tried to take one of their best players out of the game. And uh, we were able to do that And uh, for the most part. And, and, and uh, you know, uh, Kadarius, the offensive line, played extremely well. We knew it was going to ride him. And uh, we expressed that to him. And so he had a couple of weeks to get ready for it. Coach, you've had your bye week in a game of this magnitude sometimes can – lead to sometimes a letdown following that. With your team on a six-game winning streak, uh, what will you do and what will you talk to them about about staying focused on the prize that you now can see clearly in view? Well, you know, no disrespect for anything involved or anyone involved. Uh, you know, we knew what kind of game the Magic City Classic was. We knew uh, what kind of um, what was at stake. Uh, but, you know, we've had our eyes set on if you will, a bigger prize, and so we're not there. Uh, the Magic City Classic was one step that we had to take, and um, you know we've been fortunate we've taken that step, and now we're going to try to take another step. And uh, so, you know, as big as that game was, um, we still haven't accomplished what our main goals were, and so uh, that's where our focus will be. You know, whether we'll get there or not remains to be seen, but um, you know we haven't reached what we wanted to reach yet. Coach, and also, can you briefly talk about, you know, where you are now from where you started the season? Um, I mean, we're the same football team. We're just um, a little little older and a little wiser. Um, you know, we started this thing off, uh, you know, both games that we played at the early going, we were in them. Um, we just really, uh, we were still trying to figure out how to win football games because we have a lot of young people out there, particularly on the offensive side. So uh, we were trying to still figure out, uh, what to take, what not to take, and things of that sort. And, uh, you know, they end up costing us a few ball games. We played two good football teams that were ready to play us. And uh, we, when you make mistakes, they'll make you pay, and that's what happened to us. Uh, we've been minimizing those mistakes. Uh, our kids now have been making plays. There's a, there's a major trust factor involved here between coaches and players and players and coaches, offense and defense, defense and special teams, and, and all the way around the board. And so, you know, when mistakes are being made, uh, you know, we're not harping on those mistakes. We're going to fix them and we're going to move on, regardless of who's making them. Okay, thank you, Coach. Thank you. Coach Jones, good morning. This is Charles Evans from WPRL. Hey, Charles, how are you, Fine. Right. Um, talk a little bit about, uh, first of all, uh, Alcorn's defense. Pretty aggressive. You know, they fly around with the football, and I know you're a defensive minded coach. Talk about that, and I know you didn't see Arnold Walker, the running back for Alcorn last year, but two years ago when you came here, he had a big run to help salt away a, a very close game uh, here two years ago. Uh, talk about those. Well, this is what I know about them. Um, all going, you know, they've been playing us uh, extremely tough for a number of years. You know, we've had the upper hand for a couple of years as far as winning the close games in the last two years. They've been able to do it. So, you know, we know what kind of football team we're about to face. Uh, we know what kind of uh, – talent they have, we know what kind of uh, size they have, aggression they have, and all those things, and we got to be ready for it. Uh, this is no mean, by any means or stretch of the imagination, a guaranteed win or however you want to call it. Uh, we're going to have to go out there and play the best game we can play and hope that is good enough, and uh, you know, and that's what we're gearing up to do. Uh, this, this will be a tremendous challenge for us, particularly being on the road. Uh, Coach, talk about uh, Arnold Walker, the running back. 
Well, you know, again, I haven't seen much film on them because we've been concentrating on uh, the teams that we've had. I mean, the teams that we had to face. Um, you know, uh, I know I know what kind of player he was when when they beat us. I know what he did against us. Uh, you know, he has good balance. Uh, he's a kid that's going. It's just not going to fall down because you bump into him. Uh, you know, and he has good speed. To, you know, once he gets into the secondary, he's going to finish the deal, seal the deal. So, you know, they have good players across the board. Uh, uh, they got some talent there, man, and, uh, you know, we got to get ready for it. And, you know, Nona Walker is no exception. Coach, do you feel like even though this is just the next step in the process, you got something special going? I mean, you won games in a lot of different ways, some high-scoring games, some low-scoring games, some come-from-behind wins. Do you feel like that even though this is the next step, you – you got something special going? Well, I, mean, I don't know about that. You know, I mean, anytime you're stringing together a couple of wins, uh, you know, you obviously you have something special going, but, you know, it it can be derailed at any at any moment, and that's what everybody's job is to do is derail you. You know, uh, for a number of weeks, Alabama State walked around with the bullseye on their back. Uh, now, you know, the bullseye's on our back, so to speak, so... You know, when 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 we play teams, we know we're gonna get the absolute best, um, and uh, we got to be ready for it. Um, so, you know, with with a little success comes, uh, you know, comes some, you know, if you will, a little pressure because everybody's gonna come at you with their best, and if you're not ready to play, uh, you know, you'll fall by the wayside. So, you know, we're gonna get our guys ready to play. We're gonna put forth our best effort. Um, and I know Coach Spears will do the same, and uh, you know, we'll see how this thing unfolds. A former coach told me a pat on the back one week can lead to a kick in the you-know-what the next week if you're not ready. So I guess that, that's that got to be the thing. Of course. I mean, you know, you're only as good as your last football game, you know. And uh, um, what happened Saturday is is gone. Uh, we can no longer enjoy that. we got to get ready for the next one. And uh, if we're sitting around still patting ourselves on the back, uh, worrying about what we did uh, at the Mad City Classic, uh, we won't be bad long because this team is very capable of uh, of uh, beating us, even if we're focused. Any final questions for Coach Jones? Coach, we appreciate the time this morning. Uh, good luck at Alcorn, and we will talk to you next week. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. That brings us to Alabama State Head Coach uh, Reggie Barlow. Is Coach Barlow on the call? Yes, sir. Good morning, Coach. Uh, tough loss for you guys uh, in the Magic City Classic. Uh, if you could just kind of summarize that game, and then you uh, head to Alabama, or I'm sorry, Arkansas Pine Bluff this week. Uh, talk a little bit about the Golden Lions, and then we'll open it up for questions. Yep. Uh, what is that? This weekend's game was a. Uh, it was a. Uh, you know, it's the Magic City Classic. A lot of uh, excitement and uh, a lot of stuff going on there, and. Went in and played against a good team, and, uh, you know, we just uh, wasn't able to get it done. I wish there was some type of, uh, you know, like I told the players, that uh, you come up with all type of philosophical reasons why you didn't uh, win it when really it's just boiled down to we uh, we, we we messed up, you know. Uh, we start the game off with the interception and a fumble uh, that put our defense in a bad situation, and, uh uh, they were able to capitalize on it, and uh, you know we was playing catch up from that point on. And the second half we came out and did some positive things, but uh, we had field goals blocked, and uh, you know you can't have that. We got a weapon in Bobby Wenzig, and uh, you know uh, we we allowed uh, six points to get out of there. I'm confident that he would have made the field goals, but it didn't happen. And uh, we just picked the, the the biggest game, biggest stage uh, to have our worst game. Uh, you know, on special team wise, and then of course defensively, uh, not being able to stop the run uh, is uh, discouraging. Uh, you know, uh, we we knew that that's what they were going to do, and uh, we just got to figure that out. Maybe we need to, uh, uh, you know, just go back to the drawing board on uh, some of the things that we're doing defensively and uh, try to get get it settled. But uh, still love our team. Think we got a good team, some good players. We're excited about them and. Uh, you know, guys, good get an opportunity to go and play uh, against another team uh, this weekend, Arkansas Pine Bluff. It's uh, uh, it's their their homecoming, I think, and um, you know, we got a lot of respect for all the teams in the SWAC and uh, definitely uh, Coach Coleman's team and 
so it'll be an exciting game. Go up there and play against a good, solid team. And uh, last year we played them, and it was a, uh, it went down to the wire. So I imagine it'll be the uh, same type of game over here uh, in uh, Pine Bluff this weekend. We'll open it up for questions for head coach Reggie Barlow from Alabama State. Hey, Coach Barlow, good morning to you. Ty Miller from Sheridan Broadcasting. Good morning. Coach, uh, I'm, with Devin the big guy scored on that long run, uh, was there some confusion before the extra point was kicked? I know there was a lot of excitement, and which could have led to the kick being blocked. No, no confusion. It's, uh, you know, I mean, not our our uh, field goal team, our field goal team, I mean, we – uh, we we have a set of guys that we have on there, and uh, you know it was some excitement, but uh, you know the the execution of it still uh, just wasn't what it needed to be. And uh, you know uh, we we got to do a better job of getting our guys to understand how important it is, and it's not a playoff, and it's not a play that you can just go out there and uh, you know not give your best effort. And uh, that's that's really what it boils down to. You mentioned that the running game uh, of Alabama A&M took its toll in your defensive front. What are you going to do in terms of trying to fix that against another running team you have coming your way? Yeah, we, we, we haven't been good against the run all year. And uh, really, uh, you know, tired of talking about it, to be honest. But I do understand it's something that we got to address. And um, uh, Coach Thorns, we got a lot of confidence in him and his uh, thought process when it comes to preparing our defense. And, um, and we know our strength is our secondary, and, you know, people are not going to throw it around on us. Uh, well, we hope not, but uh, we, we just got to get our guys to, to understand their fits and getting off blocks. And, I, I mean, that's basically what it is. I mean, there, you know, at some point you got to beat man coverage, I mean, man uh, blocks and get off blocks. And you got to be able to fit where you're supposed to be uh, if you're a linebacker. So, uh uh, you know, it's just things we've got to continue to work on, and uh, we'll, we'll make sure we address that uh, this week in practice. Coach, admittedly, you played your worst game this season, so with that out the way, hopefully, you still have, I guess, your players focused on the prizes or prizes. You still can, you can still end up in a SWAC championship game, and even better, you can still end up as national champion. Have you, are you aware of that? Well, I, the national championship part, I, you know, um, I I hadn't played a whole bunch of tennis, too, but I do know, uh, you know, for SWAC, I mean, we got in the SWAC championship game last year, I think, based on uh, the last game of uh, of the season with, uh, you know, uh, getting some help. So, you know, we understand that, you know, that's still a possibility. Uh, but, you know, in order for it to happen, we have to, you know, find a way to, to, to have success against Pine Bluff. And, uh, you know, they're a good team, and I'm – this, our our conference probably has more parity than any league uh, in all levels around the country. So, uh, you know, any given Saturday, anything can happen. And uh, you know, they're a good team, and we we like our team. So uh, it'll be it'll be a good game for us. And 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 if we want to have an opportunity to, you know, be swag champs or get in the swag game, we we have to uh, find a way to get a victory this weekend. Okay, thank you, coach. Yes, sir. Coach Reggie Benson with the Hustle Times. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, update us on Greg Jenkins' status, please, and, and what did he do? Yeah, you know, Greg is Greg has been hampered really since our second game, Eastern Michigan game. You know, with a, a hip uh, issue, and uh, you know he's, he's he's been a soldier. He's fought through it, and he's practiced, and uh, you know, and and we didn't address all that, you know, prior to the game, but. Uh, you know, he had been hobbled a little bit over the bye week. And, uh, you know, so we, you know, we he's our guy. And uh, he, he could be great, you know, when he's healthy. And, you know, we, we, we want to give him an opportunity to uh, to get out there and play. But, you know, he, he wasn't right. Uh, and we, we, you know, we don't want to put him out there or leave him out there if we didn't think he was going to be uh, mentally uh, able to, you know, to handle the pressure that was going to be brought on by A&M. So uh, we decided to take him out and put uh, uh, Dominguez in there, who we, you know, Dominguez is a, he's a, he's a warrior, man. I love watching that guy play football, and uh, he came in and did a good job for us. Uh, going forward, I guess you, you, you get that the performance by Dominguez gives you some confidence going forward if, if Greg can't get back. Well, you know what, uh, Reggie, we, we've always had that confidence in Dominguez, and that is a good place to be when you know you can lose a guy like Jenkins, but you still have a guy like uh, Dominguez that you can say, well, you know what, 
Let's roll. And uh, he's a Dominguez is a smart guy. He he studies the game. He knows the game. And I mean, some of the feedback he was giving us in his game was just uh, it was mind boggling. I mean, he was able to communicate so much stuff, and uh, and, and it's a good feeling to have a guy like him. So you know, Greg is Greg won the job. You know, because he you know he, he gives us a opportunity to do a lot of things, but if he's not healthy, then we'll have to go with Dominguez. Uh, one more question. You you mentioned uh, about your defense. Uh, Coach Jones had said that your defense was similar to, to Grambling's defense, and and I think they built their game plans around that because, they, you know, Lacey had a huge game against Grambling. So when you talk about your defense, is it the scheme or is it the personnel in terms of the running game? Well, uh, I don't think it's the scheme. I mean, we've we we got a great scheme, and, uh, you know, Coach Thorns is very knowledgeable and does a great job. It's just, you know, again, it, it comes to, you know, your fits and knowing where you're supposed to be. And, you know, there, there are ways that we coach the guys up on when, when they're running zone read, where they're going to read the defensive end, where, okay, this guy, you know, you're going to take the quarterback, you're going to take the running back, the dives. And, you know, it's just – you know, just mind farts, if you will. Guys just, you know, getting caught up in the in the in the, in the play of the game and just uh, not being able to make the adjustments. So we just need to make it simplified for them because, you know, we ha- we have to put them in position to make plays and um, and and encourage them or, or find other ways to get it to them. Uh, but I like our scheme. Uh, we 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 do a good job, and uh, you know, we just got to go back to the drawing board. It's just a uh, a bad game for us all the way around, and. Uh, Good learning experience, and uh, you know, we talked to our guys about that, and uh, we'll, we'll get it corrected. Any final questions for Coach Barlow from Alabama State? Coach, we appreciate the time this morning. Good luck at UAPB, and we will talk to you next Monday. Yep. That brings us to Alcorn State head coach Melvin Spears. Is Coach Spears on the call? Yes, good morning. Good morning, Coach. A, uh, a loss for your guys down at Southern uh, over the weekend. If you could talk a little bit about that game, and then you've got Alabama A&M uh, coming into town this weekend. Talk about the Bulldogs a little bit, and then we'll open it up for questions. Well, actually, uh, you know, we talked about it, talked to our guys all week about just the atmosphere down, and it was just outstanding at Southern University homecoming. And the main thing is that we were just ambushed right away. Coach Mitchell had his team up and ready to go. They came out fighting, and we got, a, uh, like, the old, like the old guys say, a good old-fashioned butt-kicking. But overall, I thought we, we made some adjustments at halftime and came back there. They scored 23 points in the first half. We snapped it over their head. We fumbled. We did a number of different things. But on the other hand, we only gave up a touchdown in the second half. We had a number of opportunities to do some things in the fourth quarter. We just didn't capitalize on it. We had it for five times uh, on the offense side of the ball, and whether we had a play here or there, a play or make, but it really boiled down to the big fellas up front. And I thought uh, Southern did an excellent job dominating us up front where, you know, we couldn't get uh, number one off and running. But overall, man, our guys will keep fighting. And uh, the thing is about it is that it's just a, a learning process when you go into a hostile environment with that kind of uh, – but that kind of excitement, and, and I just felt like our guys kind of got a little starstruck a little bit when you got that many of them. But overall, hey, we came back yesterday, had a great week of practice, and we got another tough one coming in here. You know, Coach Jones and I have been, been going against each other for a long time, to be exact, and I certainly know a great deal about the things that we do over here and what we've done in the past. And uh, uh, I know him in Broski Towns, who's been around for a long time. So, we're similar in nature. Did they got you know John McKenzie, who was in our league, an excellent quarterback from uh, Jackson State, who's done a good job as well in the play calling aspect. So you know it's still the Southwestern Athletic Conference, and like Coach Barlow said, you know the parity part of it is just about your preparation and being able to play. You know the type of football that you need to play and minimize your mistakes. We'll open it up for questions for head coach Melvin Spears from Alcorn State. Coach Beers, Reggie Benson with the Huntsville Times. Good morning. Hey, Reg, how you doing this morning? I'm doing great. Uh, look, uh, I know you you started uh, Darius uh, last for three weeks, if I'm not mistaken. Is he your guy, or did, or did Bridge make an appearance? I haven't looked on the web about the stats well, over the weekend. Right now, Darius Smith is our quarterback, and uh, you know we thought he had a number. Of keys. When you look at the statistics, he did a pretty good job. He had about five or six drops. Kind of, you know, the IR offensive line really didn't. You know, protect him 
like we thought they should have. They got at us pretty good, but overall, Darius to be the guy, and we thought he did a pretty good job down the stretch. You mentioned your uh, your your offensive line. You, you, I don't know if you got a chance to watch any of them film yet. Give me your take on on their defensive line. Well, you know, Brasky Towns and uh, Coach Jones have always had you know up tempo, aggressive type defenses, and I don't look for anything any different than you know the wars that we've had over the years depict that we always had these outstanding defensive battles. So I'm looking for the same type. I've seen them a number of different times on television. So I'm against take a sub. We watched them yesterday, and I saw watching them on Thursday. They still had the same uh, same kind of intensity as guys. You know, they play man coverage when they can, and the only difference is that they play a little bit more zone defense. So I expect the same kind of aggression from them. It's just a matter of our guys just coming to play. It's not that we can't protect. We will protect. It's, it's just you got to come to play. And Southern did a really good job getting out there. And on that particular day, hey, they, they pressurized us uh, on and on and on. And uh, at the end of the day, they won the ball game. Uh, you've watched uh, A&M's offensively. Uh, the running game obviously was huge the other day. They've had three or four games where they had big rushing games. Give me an idea about Lacey and A&M's offensive line. Please. Love it. Love it. He reminds me of the guy that we have over here in Arnold Walker who's who's similar in nature, uh, a tough guy. Lacey possesses the same kind of, you know, the, the same kind of attributes. But on the outside, you know, the freshman kid, number four and number three, possesses the speed that is going to take an order for us to uh, have an opportunity to win. We, we know where our weaknesses is. You know, traditionally we've done a, a real decent job, you know, against the run. We've got to stop the run again because that's, you know, in this league here, you've got to have to be a little bit more balanced in order to do the things that we need to do. You know, we're really, really young in the secondary, but our front seven is, is supposed to control the ball game. And, uh, you know, early on in the Southern game, we didn't play as well. We got down, but we came back. We came back and made some adjustments, shut them down. And, uh, and lo and behold, they got one score in the second half. And up to that point, we were only giving up a little bit less than 100 yards a game when it comes down to rushing. So I'm really late to fight it. We're up for the challenge. I want to see, you know, Mr. Lacey go against, you know, our aggressive type defense, and I'm sure Brasco Town is going to do likewise. Thank you. Yeah, Melvin, now this is uh, Roscoe Nance. How you doing? How you doing, man? I'm doing good. Uh, good. Jackson State is celebrating its uh, centennial football this year. Yes, sir. I know you have a lot of history with them having played against them uh, when you were playing in Alcorn and, and also coaching against them. Just talk about the quality of that program over the years and uh, what, they, what they've meant to SWAC. Well, when you start thinking about Jackson State, you know, when you when you look at, number one, the first thing you have to think about is the attendance ratio. If you go back and look at history of a Jackson State program, Jackson State has won the attendance for, I'll bet you, 15, 20 years in a row. And then when you think about the number of athletes that have gone on to the next level, they're stuck in the none. You know, when you talk about Grambling, when you talk about Jackson, you talk about, you know, they call them the big three. You know, Grambling and Jackson is, is nip and tuck when you start talking about outstanding athletes. They've always had great coaches. When you, you know, when you go back as far as, you know, Big John Mary, Bob Hill, you know, uh, Coach Garden did an excellent job. And you bring you all the way up to the guys where they are right now. And those guys all had an opportunity to play against the legendary Eddie Robinson and the legendary Marino Castle. So when you start thinking about what that program has meant to the Southwestern Athletic Conference, it's one of the big three. So uh, the big three is Grambling, Southern, and Jackson State, you know, from an attendance, from a, a participation. You know, you got to always think about those three at any time when you come in this conference to play. Well, what has made them so successful? How, how, what has enabled them to be so successful over the years? Football games are won by football players making football plays. I think they've had an outstanding players go all the way back to Lim Barter, the Richardson brothers, just to name a few guys, the Jackie Slater who played 20 years and, and, and having the best running back of all time than Walter Payton. So, when you start thinking about excellent, excellent uh, football players, but they got a, a an excellent venue as well. When you start talking about Jackson, Jackson is, is in the city. They got great legacy, great history, so it makes it um, a little tougher to go in, and uh, doesn't make it that tough to go in there and recruit. So it's uh, it's an outstanding place. Okay, coach. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Any final questions for Coach Spears? Uh, coach Spears, Reggie Benson again. One last question. Uh, I I just went online and I found Bridge has been released from your team. Is that correct? And if so, uh, what can you tell me about that? Well, I can't tell you a whole lot. It's just a matter that you know we really appreciate what uh, Brandon did for our program. 
you know, we just, it's just unfortunate that we, uh, he wanted to kind of exercise his right or fill his, his services someplace else. And, and that's basically all we can tell you about it. The main thing is that he's a good guy, a good person, you know, um, good athlete, but certainly, you know, you know, everything falls in the competition factor over here and really what folks wants to do. So it's all about great competition over here from every position and, you know, guys play in order to, uh, guys compete in order to play. And that's really what it boils down to. Hey, Coach Spears, Ty Miller from Sheridan Broadcasting. Good morning to you. Yes, sir. Hey, Coach, uh, the NCAA is, uh, they had a lot of uh, uh, stories out last week about paying athletes $2,000 if the conference can afford it. What are your thoughts on that in terms of helping out student athletes? Well, you know, I'm all in favor of making sure that our students get an opportunity to go to school and be able to participate at a very, very high level from an academic, from an athletic standpoint. But on the academic side, it's really what it boils down to. I don't think the car the correlation really fits when you're talk, talking about the SEC, the Pac-10, when you relate it to what goes on in our conferences. And you, you know, we, you know, the thing about all of our conferences is that you know they're sitting at one budget factor, we're sitting at a different budget factor. And if in fact that we can find some kind of way to help them, you know, I'm in favor of it. But I don't think that that, that process that they're talking about is going to favor us simply because of the fact of where we are and the amount of revenue that is being shared along the way from a conference standpoint. Also, what about their uh, thoughts on multi-year grants as opposed to year-to-year -year scholarships? Well, I think it should be at the at the discretion of the of the coach because simply because of the fact of a number of things that are going on, you got young people that are that are that are fluctuating in and out, and what it does is that it creates a couple of different uh, things. The reason why they made an opportunity to go to the year-to-year -year thing is because of individuals come to school and they just wouldn't do anything, and then you're stuck with paying for them. I think it's like anything else. It's the barter system in America. You know, you got to you get paid to do your job. You get paid to do the things that are right, and you certainly transfer it on. And, and uh, I think we need to continue to do the things that we're doing. And if, in fact, a coach wants to give a, a player a multi-year uh, multi deal, then let them use it at their discretion. Okay, thank you, Coach. Coach Spears, we appreciate the time this morning. Good luck against A&M on Saturday, and we'll talk to you next Monday. Appreciate you. Thank you. That brings us to Arkansas Pine Bluff head coach Monty Coleman. Is Coach Coleman on the call? Yes, I am. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. Uh, tough loss for your guys at home to Grambling over the weekend, uh, but you've got Alabama State coming in. If you could just kind of summarize the Grambling game, a look ahead to the Hornets, and then we'll open it up for questions. Well, definitely a, a very bit of loss for us. Um, I thought we played okay, just not playing consistent enough. I uh, don't have the balance right now in offense. Uh, one week we, we rush for a lot of yards and, and uh, don't pass, and, and that's, next week we, we throw for yards and don't rush. And uh, we want to definitely be a, a balance, a little more balanced offense. And right now, because of reasons, um, we're just not, you know, we're not a balanced uh, offensive team right now. Thought the defense played well the second half. Uh, we we still making mistakes um, uh, on defense, giving up points uh, when I think that we don't have to. Uh, if we just play the defense called, um, that could eliminate some of the points that we have given up in previous games. Uh, and of course, against scrambling this past weekend. Uh, the suspension of the 12 guys uh, escalated when we lose three of our starters on offense. Uh, I lose my tight end, lose my, my starting left guard, and then lose my starting fullback. So instead of having 12 guys out, now I've got 15 out, and, and it showed the second half. Normally, we're pretty consistent on fourth downs and in the red zone, but without a Stephen Jones who pounds it in for us, uh, we weren't very good on fourth down. Um, that game, we're, 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 we've watched it. Uh, we'll go over it with our kids today, and we'll put that behind us, and we'll start preparing for Alabama State. We know how, how powerful they are. They're a very good football team, very well coached. Uh, I have a great record right now. They're coming off a better defeat against uh, A&M this past week, so I know Coach Barlow will have his team ready to go, and I can assure you that we'll be ready to go also. We'll open it up for questions for Head Coach Monty Coleman from UAPB. Coach Coleman, I see Morrell, time for commercial. Uh, I think you guys will have the 100 yards as a team against uh, Grambling State. Uh, you get Dylan's back to Alabama State. How big is that going to be uh, to try to establish a run again against Alabama State? 
I, I think it's going it's going to help us out. Uh, Billings is a big part of our offense, and uh, any any time you lose a player of his caliber, it's gonna it's gonna show up in your stats. And um, uh, we, we know we're just glad to have him back again this week. But you know, one of the other key factors was Stephen Jones. Uh, we were down in the red area uh, several times. Uh, we had fourth and uh, ones and twos, and uh, unfortunately we couldn't couldn't convert those. And um, you know, we'll be without him again this week. Yeah, uh, Chipper, you know, has uh, made one of his uh, best games of the season. You know, he had played behind Dalton a lot in the linebacker core and came up with two uh, uh, big turnovers for you right there. You know, I mean, uh, you know, uh, talk a little bit about how Chipper's, you know, kind of uh, risen to the challenge, you know, in, in the midst of what's going on. Well, Timber, I think he had a, a real good game. He graded out very well uh, by the defensive coach, uh, linebacker coach. Uh, he stepped up when we absolutely needed him to. And that's what we talked about. Two hour guys are uh, all week long. It was going to be an opportunity for other guys to step in and play because of the suspensions. And Timber was one that really st- stood up and played well for us. Had a, an outstanding football game. Uh, had an interception. Had a fumble recovery. And uh, several tackles. I think he finished with about 12 tackles. So it was a very good game for him, and that's what we expect. He looked, he looked very good. That's what, that's the reason why we recruited the kid because we knew he could play, and he's got his opportunity, and he played well. Yeah, uh, coach, you know there's been a lot of frustration lingering, uh, and now being part of a four-team race, and like Tom said earlier, you know it, it's hard to, to find any uh, uh, situation, you know, uh, you know like like it's easy. Okay, if Alabama and then went down the East, they're going to win the championship, but. You know, it has to be a, a pretty frustrating feel right now to be part of the 14 race. Have you guys handled that frustration up to this point? Well, I didn't say it was frustrating. You did. <laughs> so it's not frustrating for us. The thing that we're trying to do is do what we do, and that's win football games. And uh, we're going to continue to fight. We're going to continue to fight, and we're going to play hard. And that's the thing that I could compliment this team on. We, we've lost some, some very close football games. Uh, but we had gone in the tank. Every week they've come to play. Every day in practice they've practiced hard. So I don't have the frustration, of course. Uh, we want to win games, but uh, we're, we're not frustrated. We're still in the race on the West. Uh, we still got a chance. And the thing that we're going to do is not worry about anybody else. We're just going to take care of our business the best we can. And uh, we'll see how the chips fall at the end of the season. Coach, your team still got off to a fast start against Grambling. Uh, you know, 14 nothing in the first quarter, but but unable to hold it. Was that were they just playing on some emotion, kind of coming out, or or how did that uh, transpire? No, I, I think I think Grambling made some adjustments. Um, uh, they, they they played as man early in the game, and uh, we, we were able to capitalize on it. And um, they they made adjustments. I think they went to a zone, and uh, it kind of stymied us a little bit. Uh, when we had a couple of guys to go down, our start tight end went down. Uh, you know, that kind of uh, uh, changed our game plan because now we've got to put a guy in that uh, our second-team quarterback. And um, uh, that, that's where the suspension really came in to affect us the most uh, because some of the guys that were suspended would have played that role and we wouldn't have lost a beat, I don't think. And the other thing was we just we just had some bonehead plays on defense where we've got guys running free again, and, and we, we've got, you know, this is week nine, and, oh, that was week eight. You know, I would have thought we would have outgrown those plays, those uh, particular situations, but unfortunately we didn't. So we'll go back to the drawing board, and, and we'll simplify it even more and, and, and see if we can put the right person into play. And it's homecoming week at UAPB. Talk a little bit about the homecoming atmosphere. Uh, I think homecoming anywhere in, in the SWAC is, is very intense uh, for the home team. Uh, it's no different here at UAPB. We'll have alumni come from all over the country. Uh, we've got the, 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 the RVs at State Park from the weekend uh, against Grambling. They're still here, about 10 of them. So it, it's going to be a great, great atmosphere to start off tomorrow with assemblies. <laughs> And uh, it'll, it'll carry on throughout the week uh, with another pep rally on Friday. So homecoming here is, is, is typical black college football where the band is gearing up for something special. And, of course, um, it's special. It's special for the city. It's special for the university. And it's definitely special for the uh, football team. 
Any final questions for Coach Coleman from UAPB? Coach, we appreciate the time. Good luck against Alabama State on Saturday, and we will talk to you on Monday. Thank you. Thank you. That brings us to Grambling State Head Coach Doug Williams. Is Coach Williams on the call? Good morning. Uh, big win for your guys uh, over at UAPB over the weekend. If you could talk a little bit about that, and then you head to Jackson State uh, for a pretty good rivalry game there this weekend. Talk a little bit about the Tigers, and then we'll open it up for questions. Well, it certainly was a big win for us, considering you know some of the uh, decision that was made out of the conference office, and you know emotionally with the players and coaches, and uh, a lot of things that we you know we had to deal with that week. And uh, for them to stay focused and, and, and still go out and do what they did, I thought was a, a big win for us. And certainly this week going to Jackson, uh, you know, who's arguably probably one of the best teams in this conference at this state, you know, with the quarterback, the way he's playing, and, and the, the people he has around him, uh, and the fact that they cannot go to the conference championship, uh, I think they have a chip on their shoulder, and they feel like they got something to prove. We'll open it up for questions for head coach Doug Williams from Grand Lake State. Hey, Doug, good morning to you. Ty Miller from Sheridan Broadcasting. Hey, Ty. How are you? Um, I'm pretty good, man. How are you? Good. Let's talk about Casey Terrio. I mean, you've handed this kid the uh, you know trophy last season for being the Offensive Player of the Year. What are your thoughts on him as a quarterback? Well, I, I think what he does uh, better than a lot of people is – it's uh, moving around in the pocket. You know, I always say in order to play the, play the game at, at that position, you you got to have some pocket awareness. And, and when I say about that, I mean you got to have a feel. Not not so much a look because as a quarterback, if you're looking at the rush, you're looking at color, uh, you're not going to be consistently uh, good as far as putting the ball down the field. Uh, that's a natural instinct that, that you have to have. And I think he has that that feel in the pocket. He knows when, when trouble is lurking. He knows when to stand there. And he certainly knows when to get out. Doug, not many people thought you would still be a factor in the SWAC West race at this point. But there you are with three losses as our four other teams. So can you kind of summarize, I mean, what, what can happen at this point for your team and, and what you've talked to them about? Well, I agree, too. <laughs> a lot of people probably thought it. You know, the way we was playing earlier, it was hard to imagine that that, that could happen. But I uh, give credit to, to the guys. I think they showed a lot of character uh, this past weekend and standing up and on the road and still having five turnovers and find a way to still win, I think, speaks volume for the character, the young men that was out there. Um, you know, I told a long time ago that um, – at the end of the day, you know, we played some games that we had an opportunity to win. We didn't win them. But it's in, it's in our own destiny now. It's our own hands, and we can't ask anybody else to help us. we got to help ourselves. And uh, certainly this past weekend kind of gave them a, a lift and understanding of what we talk about. You have a young team, and when you go through the stretch like you're going through right now where you knock off time block, some people unexpectedly, and now you take on the Jackson State team that on paper should be favored. So how do you get the kids focused on, on, on meeting this challenge? Well, we, and I don't knock off Pine Bluff, but the week before, uh, I think a lot of people didn't give us credits uh, for, for beating Valley, which we had to do it in overtime. And uh, they certainly won their first game, and shit, that's good for Coach Morgan over that. But I think the key here is, is, is doing what we do and, and try to prevent – them from doing some of the things that they do, and, and that's what we're going to concentrate on uh, starting today all the way up to Saturday is not worry about, uh, you know, the people that they have played. It's the fact that they played us now, and we got to go out and perform. Hey, Doug, one more question. Uh, the NCAA considering uh, allowing multi-year grants as opposed to year-to-year -year scholarships. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I kind of like it the, the way it is now. And Hopefully they lead it up to the school that to make that decision. And uh, I think that's something that uh, has to be thought out. And so far as allowing up to $2,000 to be given to student athletes, I know most of the bigger schools can afford that. What are your thoughts on what the SWAC and other black colleges may be able to afford? Well, it's, it's, it's certainly going to depend on what we can afford. Uh, I think if we could get, get some more money, 
out of uh, some of these companies that, that we wear the uniforms and shoes from but some of the schools we might can put it in our budget. That's a good answer, man. Thank you a lot. Mm-hmm. Coach, uh, I.C. Morrell from the uh, Pine Bluff Commercial. I know this is going back to a play in, in, on uh, Saturday. Uh, you, you had scored the interception uh, to make it a seven-point game. You guys went for two rather than going for one. I didn't get to ask you that Saturday. Uh, what, uh, what, was the, what was the thought process behind going for two in that situation? And I, and I certainly wish I had a call timeout so we can get a better understanding. Two to two points was this. We was up 27-7, 27 to 20. Uh-huh. And and we felt like if they scored, you know, because of the situation they was in as far as uh, having a clear shot to the championship game from what I read in the newspaper, that they would have went for the field goal, would have went for the extra point, which would have sent it into overtime. Mm-hmm. But if we had made the two-point conversion, that's a nine-point difference. They certainly would have had to score twice. Gotcha. Okay? Yes. Yes, All right. Good. All right. Yeah, this is uh, Roscoe. How you doing? Hey, Roscoe. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, Jackson State is celebrating its uh, uh, football centennial uh, this year, and actually the celebration is this weekend uh, with you guys on the channel. Let's talk about uh, Jackson State's program over the years from a historical uh, standpoint. You know, how good it's been. <laughs> you, you, you and I both know, Roscoe, when you, when you talk about uh... – uh, Jackson State, you know, and you talk about Grambling, I think you're talking about two schools basically almost in the same boat. Well, when you think about the, the W.C. Gardens over there and, and what he did for so many years and dominated when he was there and, and people before that, uh, Bob Hill of, of, of the world um, and the people that they've gone on to do good in, in, at the next level. I think when you think about Jackson State, you know, there's a lot of history, there's a lot of legacy over there. You know, the Richardson boys, the Paytons, and, and, and all the in-between. So, I mean, I can understand the celebration, and, and I'm sure they figured out a better time to celebrate with Grandpa coming to town. Well, you know, you, I think probably in the SWAC and in the Southeast that they get to do it. It seems like from a, uh, you know, a national perspective, they aren't that you know, thought of in the same terms same breath with the Grambling or uh, Tennessee State? Well, I, I, think, I think the reason for that, Rasko, and, and, and I think we all would allude to the fact that College A. Nixon uh, did something early on, and that is put Grambling out there across the country. And, you know, from New York to California, Detroit, you name it, Grambling played there. You know, and I'm sure Jackson had been uh, – uh, the same way as far as going those places, uh, those names would have been out there. You know, uh, you got to give credit to to uh, College A and Coach Robinson for finding a way to get it done. But as far as athlete and what Jackson has done, uh, I still think they're along the same line uh, as far as um, the program. All right. Hey, Coach, can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, this is uh, Rob J. with Tell Us How. How you doing this morning? Hey, Rob. How you doing? Hey, Coach. Uh, any thoughts on uh, Joe Paterno uh, passing uh, Coach Robinson with the all-time win total? No, I think I think what it what it, what it tells you, and and you know, I, I take my hat off to Coach Paterno for giving uh, Coach Robinson the, the prop that he gave him on on national TV. But at the same time, you know, I look at him and I looked at Coach the same way as for his longevity. And, and that doesn't happen today, that coaches stay around that long. So I think we all got to take our head off to Coach Paterno. Thank you, Coach. All right. Any final questions for Coach Williams from Grambling State? Coach, we appreciate the time this morning. Good luck against Jackson State on Saturday, and we will talk to you next Monday. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. That brings us to Jackson State head coach Kamaji. Is Coach Kamaji on the call? Uh, yes, I am. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. Uh, big win for your guys over at the Shreveport Classic uh, against Prairie View this this weekend, and then you uh, host Grambling coming up. If you could talk a little bit about the Panthers and the Tigers, and then we'll open it up for questions. 
Well, you know, as usual, you know, Coach Northern is going to have his team well prepared and have them come out fired up and ready to play, and and they did just that. I mean, their first drive down the field was just awesome, and and um, they were well prepared, came out hitting, doing a great job, and you know, we just um, you know happened to you know put, you know put a few in the end zone early and kind of took a lead and kind of stayed ahead there, but um, it was a a great game, and their kids played, you know, um, all four quarters, and our kids um, played four quarters, and it turned out to be a, you know, a game we we pushed on and got a better lead, but it was no way a game that you sat back and and said that, um, well, geez, um, we finally got this one. It took um, four quarters to um, to just to just to be able to say, okay, well, we got a comfortable enough lead, and the clock is in our favor. But um, Coach is doing a great job out there, and um, I give those guys a lot of credit. And, you know, in the way they played, they played hard, and they were excited. You know, it was an exciting game. You know, everybody was up and a uh, pretty nice crowd out there in Shreveport. And, um, you know, and I was just glad that, that we came out as a winner. Talk a little bit about what you see from Grambling. Well, you know, anytime you you know, playing, you know, Doug, you know, Doug's always going to have those guys ready. You know, I've... You know, we played, you know, since, you know, you know, we started out down at Morehouse when we first, I think we first played, and, you know, he's constantly, um, he's a great coach, and, you know, you you know, you never know what to expect, you know, you just almost got to be on your toes, you know, grandma has got a fantastic reputation, and, um, you know, in, you know, in the game of football, and, and Doug has a fantastic reputation as a coach in itself, so, you know, we just got to get ourselves prepared, and, and um, try to be ready for everything, and, and hopefully we can come out and survive, you know, survive this, you know, win here. But uh, we know there's no way um, they're going to walk in here and say, well, here, Jackson State, take this win and keep, you know, keep on pushing on because Doug's not going to allow it. Neither that staff that he has going to allow it. And those ball players down there is not going to allow it. So, you know, when you when you strap up against them, you got to come ready to strap up. We'll open it up for questions for Coach Kamaji from Jackson State. Hey, Coach, uh, this is uh, Roscoe Nance. How are you doing? Hey, Roscoe. How are you today? I'm doing good. Uh, been to Jackson State. This is uh, the centennial anniversary this season. Um, so for you to be a part of uh, you know, such a uh, historic program, what does that mean? And, uh, well, um, Roscoe, I'm honored to be part of um, the 100-year um, celebration that we have going here uh I don't think there's anybody um, on the staff or maybe even on the team that will see another 100 years. And, you know, to hit that right on the head and be around here to to celebrate that at this particular time, uh, I think it's just fantastic when those type of occasions occur. And, and I think um, the kids and myself and the staff are just, you know, we happen to hit that lucky number and we're glad to be here. Well, the, 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 the program itself, the, uh, the level of excellence that it is, over the years, I mean, and you come in there into that kind of situation. What was that like for you? Well, you know, it was like a dream come true. It's, um, you know, you uh, you know, you read about, you hear about, you know, all the things that were happening in the SWAC and, and the players that came out of here, and you just go back and just the whole history of the SWAC, not just the Jackson State from Tennessee State to Grambling to Alcorn and all them guys that played and came out of this conference. And, you know, I mean, I read and read and read and read and read about it, you know, and, um, you know, when I – got an opportunity to come to the SWAC, you know, I jumped at that opportunity because I knew there were just so many great athletes that came out here, you know, Bethune-Cookman, and, you know, there was just things, you know, uh, being at Tuskegee, you know, that, you know, I just constantly kept reading about the SWAC and read and read and read and all the players that came out, and then when this job opened up and it's history, and, you know, it's just like, you know, you know, yeah, the, the, the book that you're reading, um, you know, comes into reality. You know, then you get a chance to walk around and see guys like Doug, and you get a chance to see guys like, you know, Stump, and guys that came out the conference, and guys that did a great job. And coming back, you know, I mean, it just, uh, um, you know, I mean, you just get a chance to see, you know, the guys that you, Roscoe, and, um, you know, I, I'm just amazed when I walk by, you know, some of the players that are still walking around here, uh, Willie Richardson and myself. We have a a little radio show, and, you know, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm honored. I'm honored, and I'm very proud. Hey, Coach Comedy, Ty Miller from Sheridan Broadcasting. Good morning. Hey, Ty. Good morning. How are you? 
Uh, pretty good. Coach, uh, we talked to the Clarion, Clarion Ledger last week, and you know, a lot of people have been asking us in terms of our SBN Black College Football Poll about Jackson State being eligible for the championship this year, which we've told people that they are. Now, being that that is the case, uh, how focused is your team on taking each game one at a time to achieve what they can achieve at the end of the season? We're very focused. You know, um, one at a time is, you know, uh, you know how we've been doing it. We know just one game at a time because, um, you know, uh, the, the, the Sheridan Poll is, um, it to me is, is the diamond of all diamonds. And um, right now for for Black College, but yet and still, um, you don't get that diamond unless you can reach that pinnacle. And you're never going to reach that pinnacle if you look down the road too far. It's got to be just. Um, one game at a time, and um, you know you got to be able to struggle through one game at a time. And at the very end, at the very end of the season, you can relax and see how it all turned out. But you look too far down the road, you stumble and fall. And and right now, we don't want to do that. You know, we want to just go one at a time. And we know we got a big one, a big one coming up here Saturday. I mean, a, a, a real big game. And uh, and so that's how you know our focus is on right now is looking at Grambling and seeing what we can do to um, try to, you know, keep them down to where we can at least come out as a winner. You know, um, you know that's all we want to do. We don't care how far the margin is, if it's one point or half a point. You know, we just want to see if we can um, come out, you know, on top. What is the danger of facing a young team that a lot of people didn't give a lot of uh, credit to early in the season but is now seemingly catching fire? Well, um, I, you know, I don't know. Um, um, you know, I guess I'm. You know, forget. You know, I. I thought they were always good, in my personal opinion. Um, I mean, they might have stumbled along the way. I don't. You know, um, the youth or whatever. You know, because you know, young kids can win. And you know, um, you know, at any time. You know, it doesn't matter who's playing. They all strap up. They're all good players. And you know, so I always thought they were a pretty good football team. And. And so, um, I'm, you know, they're winning some games. Um, which games they, in the past they lost, they should have, they should have won. And so, um, we're just going to play football, and, you know, and do what we got to do in order to try to come out on top. You know, we're not going to, we can't worry about, you know, the last three games because, um, in my opinion, they should have won them all. And so, um, and so that's the way I'm going to face it, and that's the way we're going to face it. Hey, thank you, coach. Thank you. Any final questions for Coach Kamaji from Jackson State? Coach, we appreciate the time this morning. Good luck against Grambling, and we will talk to you next Monday. Well, thank you very much. Come on. Thank you. That brings us to Mississippi Valley State Head Coach Carl Morgan. Is Coach Morgan on the call? Yes, I am. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, congratulations. Your team uh, got a victory over Texas Southern. Uh, on Saturday, if you could kind of summarize the uh, the win for your Delta Devils, and then you head down to South Alabama for a Thursday night contest. We'll face, talk about the Jaguars a little bit, and we'll open it up for questions. Okay, it was uh, it was homecoming this weekend. Had a real good atmosphere on campus. A lot of uh, alumni back, and uh, the tailgating was good. Uh, the stands were uh, were packed, and uh, the players played well. Uh, we knew coming into the game that uh, Texas. Texas Southern uh, was the, the uh, defending SWAC champions. Uh, had a real good defense and a real good running game. And uh, our kids played hard, played well, and we made enough plays to come out on top. And it was uh, a good victory for the players, the coaches, the alumni, and for the university as, as, a, as a whole. Let's talk a little bit about South Alabama and the short week of preparation on Thursday. Uh, short week is right. It's, uh, we're going down to Mobile. Uh, Wednesday, uh, Wednesday morning, and they're a good football team. We were uh, in the process of watching them yesterday and today, and uh, they beat Henderson State this past Saturday, 28 to three, I believe. And uh, I think they've uh, they've lost two games, five and two, or six and two, something like that. And uh, they're a good football team. Uh, they beat uh, Tennessee Martin, who who. Uh, handled uh, Murray State fairly well uh, earlier in the year. So, uh, you know, we got our work cut out for us. We'll open it up for questions for Coach Morgan from Mississippi Valley State. Coach, you guys uh, 
uh, you know, was it deja vu all over again a little bit with a with a different ending? Uh, and you know, you've been so close to that uh, elusive victory, but uh, this day, this week you were able to finally uh, close the deal. Yeah, we uh, they had the ball uh, on uh, on the plus side of the fifty uh, with about two minutes left to play, and uh, we were fortunate enough to get an interception on on that drive. Uh, a drive or two before that, they had scored their uh, first touchdown, went from two to to nine, and uh, so I, I think there were some people uh, on the sidelines, some people in the stands that were thinking, oh, here, here we go again, we're going to lose another close one, but uh, we made a play uh, at the end of the game to seal, to seal a victory, and uh, the excitement of, on, on the players' uh, faces and in their actions after the game was, was, was real good, and I told the guys, I said, remember how, how it felt to win, and, and, and nothing beats winning, and so if you want to duplicate that feeling, you got to keep doing what you've been doing, and, 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 and that feeling will come again. Obviously, your defense stepped up and uh, was really, you know, kind of the forward of the of the victory. Talk about uh, the defense and kind of how it's evolved over the season. I, I think we're playing better on defense. I think uh, we've got a better understanding of what we're trying to do. I think we're executing better. I think we're playing harder. So we're running to the ball. That's one of the things. Uh, we talked about, hey, let's do what we can do correctly and let's play harder. And I think that has happened. Uh, I, I think uh, we've had some good leadership on that side of the ball and on, on the team as a whole. And guys are trying. Like I said, uh, that, that's a positive thing, a big positive thing. Guys are still trying hard to get better each and every week. And uh, I, I think it has occurred. Does the uh, actually the short week does that work as an advantage? I mean, I'm sure your kids want to get back out on a football field as quick as possible right now. Uh, I don't know if it's, if, if it's an advantage. Uh, they do a lot of different things as far as uh, unbalanced line, uh, tackle over, tight end. Uh, they kind of mess with you uh, with the formation, so that that, that kind of hurts us when you got a short week. You got to. Uh, the recognition will be very, very key and critical in order to stop because I think they try to confuse people with some of the things they do offensively. And so uh, you, you kind of hope, that you, you know, you, you kind of wish you had a, a full week to really digest it. So we'll have to make do. And uh, like I said, the good thing, like you said, uh, to carry on uh, this momentum that we've uh, started. Uh, and now we actually got a little, a little better feel because of a win. Uh, turning around and playing on Thursday night may not be a bad thing either. Coach, a lot was made about the you know the streak and at, at 19 games overall, but uh, you also snapped a, a swack losing streak that was at 22 games. How, how important was it to get that first victory against the conference team? I, I, I didn't know the swack uh, streak was that first. I heard about the other streak, but uh, it, it was it was it was big. You know, like I said. Uh, it was, it was validation and it's validation for uh, what we're trying to do. And I think uh, once you get a win, everything is better. You know, we we came out uh, last night and had, had a practice, and the attitude, the the emotions were better. And so, you know, winning winning is is a great cure for a lot of things. And uh, so uh, that, that 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 was a great feeling. Uh, like I said, hopefully we can get another win or two in these last two days. Talk a little bit about the progress of the offense. I mean, you, you did get the win, but only 100 total yards or 101. Uh, you know, how big of that is a uh, concern moving forward? Uh, it's a concern. You know, uh, we knew coming into the game that uh, Texas Southern was one of the better defensive teams in, uh, in the conference and in the country. Uh, I think uh, number seven, I can't think of his name, is the best defensive football player in the conference, uh, the defensive lineman they got. Uh, they have a very good team, and they line up and cover all the linemen in a, in a bare front, play man behind it, and uh, they really take advantage of their talent. And so we knew coming in, we have uh, some trouble uh, running the ball, throwing the ball against them. And uh, well, offense, defense, all of us are all about work in progress. And, and we're still, uh, uh, two weeks ago, we had rushed for uh, 307 yards, I believe, against, against the coming. So, uh, so that was a plus. We kind of hit this, uh, this strong defense this past weekend, and hopefully we can get back to track and, 
and have some more consistency on Thursday night tonight. Coach Ken Rashad with PSPN Sports. How are you, sir? I'm fine, thank you. Good. Um, any particular reason why this game is on a Thursday? Is it is it a TV game, or or what reason uh, would it be scheduled for a Thursday other than the typical Saturday? Uh, I think it's a, a deal. With it. They're trying to get some students to the games, and uh, there's no TV coverage uh, of the game. But it's a Thursday night for them trying to draw a bigger crowd. I think and get students involved. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any final questions for Coach Morgan from Mississippi Valley State? Coach, we appreciate the time as always. Good luck on Thursday night against the Jaguars, and we'll talk to you next Monday. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. That brings us to Prairie View Head Coach Heisman Northern. Is Coach Northern on the call? Yes, I am. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. Uh, a loss for you guys up at the Shreveport Classic, but you still find yourself uh, actually in first place in the West. Uh, if you could talk a little bit about the game against Jackson State, and then you step out of conference this week uh, at Texas State, uh, and then we'll open it up for questions. Well, we, we ran into a team that was very much ready to play, a uh, very motivated team. Uh, you know, I, I, got, I try to tell our guys not to look at uh, some of the plays, if you go back and look at the Mississippi Valley film, you know, you may have saw some drop balls, a lot of pressure on the quarterback, and not to think that they were going to come out and play uh, that same type of way uh, against us. Like I said, no disrespect to to uh, Mississippi Valley and Coach Morgan, but I just feel like that those were not the type of plays that we were going to see with the drop balls, maybe a couple bad throws. Uh, but the bottom line is we, we ran into a team that was ready, like I said, and, uh, and from our standpoint, uh, I just didn't think we matched their intensity. We didn't finish plays, and I, I was disappointed uh, in that. But if you if you look at you know what they did from a team standpoint, you know Casey made some plays, and and I you know one play in particular that goes through my mind. We had our middle linebacker run the scot free at him, and he pump fakes the football and makes the linebacker jump, and he sidearms a throw that you know Coach Comity or Coach Wilson may not approve of, but you know the wide receiver catches it and, and gets a first down. Uh, he sort of puts you in that mindset of, to me, I was I did an internship with the Raiders when Jeff Garcia was out there. That's who he reminded me of. You know, obviously a high football IQ, but definitely can make some plays, and he made some plays with his legs. Uh, he kept some plays alive, did a good job checking the ball down, and then he did make some deep throws. Uh, on us, and like I say, you know, with that offense, you know, it's sort of pick your poison. You, you, do you stop, uh, you know, Renty or Richardson or Wilder, or do you take your chances and try to stop Lee or Gooden? And it was, it was just one of those. And that offense line, to be honest with you, played much better than I thought. I thought our defensive end matched up well, uh, but we didn't get a lot of pressure. And we got to buy two, a, a, a New Jersey for one of them. But the bottom line is they did a good job of exchanging stunts, and they did a good job with our speed rushes. And then uh, LeBeau and Robinson came out and played as, as good as advertised uh, on the defense. And, and we could not – I thought we would be able to get those big defensive tackles tired. Uh, but we, when you don't convert third downs, you don't have a chance to stay on the field long enough for the defense to get tired. Uh, but this week coming up, we got uh, Texas State uh, running an option, uh, like a lot of different looks. Uh, unbalanced line, offset wing, uh, but they going to run the football. We better strap it up and be ready to uh, stop the run. We'll open it up for questions for Head Coach Northern from Prairie View A&M. Head Coach, you talked about, uh, you know, some of the plays that Casey's were, Casey was able to make. Uh, was it just an off game for, for Adrian or – you know, I mean, he'd, he'd had such incredible numbers coming into the game. Well, I, I think uh, it was a combination of things. Like, like I say, he has a great feel for the game. So, and and it's subtle things that you don't know if you're just looking at the game. But you can watch him slide two steps to the left and and make a side arm throw. You can watch him scoot up in the pocket a little bit when Adrian was coming off the edge, and you know he dip up under him and make a throw down the field or make that check down on the swing route. Uh, he did an outstanding job of just like I say that pocket presence, and then. Uh, you know, we didn't get enough push up the middle to where we could stop him 
uh, from running the ball, and we didn't escape off block. So, you know, he did an outstanding job uh, in the pocket, and then we had some breakdowns in coverage. Uh, you know, I think everybody in America would call a corner route cover, uh, a seven route, and we had some coverages called where we had cover seven call, and the ball is thrown right, right where someone should be. Uh, you know, everybody calls a post route of eight. We're in cover eight and make it deep, deep, deep for a post route. So, you know, I'm disappointed in some of the guys in, in the secondary for, like I say, not doing their job and not making plays. And, and we had a chance to make some interceptions. Uh, I think we dropped two. Uh, we come scot-free on a punt, don't block it. Uh, we come scot-free on a uh, field goal and don't block that as well. So, and like I said, you know, we just have to make plays. Uh, and, and, and it goes back to what I was saying about sometimes, you know, coaching is overrated. Those guys – made plays to make their coaches better coaches. And, and I'm disappointed that some of our guys, when given the opportunity to make game-changing plays, we didn't finish the play. Not that we didn't play hard, but when you have an opportunity to make that big play, and like I say, when you come scot-free and you don't make that play, that's what disappoints me, especially being a defensive coach. Uh, you know, giving up the amount of yards that we gave up, uh, you know, is it, totally mind-boggling. Even with the loss, you find yourself a, a half game in front of three other teams on the on the Western Division. But uh, even in the loss column, just talk about the the Western race and how wide open it is. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't know all the scenarios, and really, you know, not to sound dismissive, but I really, you know, sort of don't care. I know this: if we win our next couple of SWAT games, from what I know, we'll end up in Birmingham. Uh, other than that. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the deal is, but I, I, I do know this. I like being in control. Uh, I hate riding a bus to football games because I'm not in control of where we're going. Uh, but you know, I, I do know this. We control our own destiny from what I know. And, uh, you know, hopefully we will take advantage of the situation uh, that we have at hand and don't have to work, wait on handouts or, or help from somebody else. You, you control your own destiny, stay in control. You talked about Texas State running the option. How difficult is it to put in a defense to defend against the option, something you don't see uh, in the swag? Well, you, you do see it. We, you see it in the form of zone read. Uh, most teams have some form of it. They're just doing it out of different formation. There is a power-based option, and in my opinion, whereas most of the teams in the swag that run the zone read are running a zone type of option where maybe one or two reads they have, you know, they'll run some trap option, uh, some lead option, and that's where you get caught up into the to the uh, different looks, a midline option, which to me is one of the hardest plays in football to defend. But we just have, and it, and it doesn't help that we have a very young ball club up the middle. Uh, you know, like I say, our, our middle linebacker, this is his first year being a starter. Uh, our two safeties, is, this is their first year being a starter. So, you know, we have to make sure that we slow the guys down, play responsibility football, and, and not uh, get so caught up into, you know, what happened the last time they ran that play. Do your job on every play. Uh, try to stretch it out from sideline to sideline, and then uh, use your team speed to run to the football. Coach Kamaji even talked about your team, uh, you know, very responsive early on in the game, uh, had a successful drive, and, and but just not able to sustain that momentum against Jackson State. Well, I, I think I make old Coach Kamaji about a hundred dollars for saying that, but uh, he, uh, we did, we came out great. Uh, you know, the first, um, I think we may have drove down the field in three plays and and got to about the four or five yard line, and once again we, uh, you know, we got bogged down. Uh, I think we got a sack and and. And then we come up and miss another field goal or early in the ball game, and you can see the body language change. Uh, we get the ball again, um, you know, have a, a good start. Uh, we get a, you know, a, a play stopped uh, early in the series, uh, and then you know we sort of take a back seat again. Uh, we get the ball in plus territory and don't get any points out of it. But uh, like I said, I think we came out ready to play. But once we couldn't get moving on those big defensive tackles. That allowed their linebackers to run free. And like I said, LeBeau and, and uh, Donovan 
end up having a great game with the speed off the edge. And uh, and their secondary did an outstanding job stopping our passing game, you know, being able to play cover one. And we got to find a way to, you know, we got to beat people. Uh, and, and it's as simple as that. If not, we're going to see a, a six or a seven man box uh, the rest of the year. But we got to find a way to make plays. And they did a good job. They changed their front up a little bit. And, uh, and you know, like I say, when you can't move those guys, it, it made it hard for us to be able to run the ball. When we couldn't run the ball, we couldn't get. I thought with our tempo, we would get those big guys tired. But like I say, when you're only running three plays at a time, nobody gets tired in three plays. Any update on Lovelock? I know uh, I noticed in the stats you went to Smiley as the backup. Is Lovelock still not not a hundred percent? Well, actually, Smiley started the game, uh, and we all we feel like when Trost comes in as a as a second guy, um, you know, he watches the game very intently, and and he can see some adjustments. Um, but we started off with Smiley. Uh, you know, we didn't do an outstanding job protecting him, and uh, we brought Trost in. I think he made his first throw, may have went for a touchdown. And then after that, uh, you know, we just didn't connect the, on some throws, on some routes. And, and uh, you know, Jerry, you know, we'll see when he's healthy enough to play, we'll put him back in. But uh, I would not put a guy out there if I don't feel like he can, you know, protect himself uh, from a pass rush or, you know, if he's not able to give us some running option uh, while we're playing. Any final questions for Coach Northern from Prairie View? Coach, we appreciate the time this morning. Good luck down at Texas State on Saturday, and we will talk to you next Monday. Yes, sir. That brings us to Southern University Head Coach Stump Mitchell. Is Coach Mitchell on the call? Yes, good morning. Good morning, Coach. A uh, big win for your guys against Alcorn State, a homecoming victory. Uh, talk a little bit about that, and then you head over to Texas Southern this weekend uh, and talk a little bit about the Tigers, and then we'll open it up for questions. Well, it was a big win because we recruit heavily against those guys, and any time you win a ball game, you have that at least to say to some of the recruits. So it was it was a fantastic win. Like you said, it was homecoming. It was a lot of guys on their staff that have ties with the Louisiana uh, area, so uh, they had a lot of fans here, and we had ours as well. So it was it was a good deal. Texas Southern, that's going to be a tough uh, tough deal. Those guys are tops in defense uh, and also in in rushing. So both offensively and defensively, we're going to have our work cut out for us. Uh, we're going to prepare to, to try to go up and, and get uh, our first two game. Uh, wins, consecutive wins since I've been here. We'll open it up for questions for Coach Mitchell from Southern University. Good morning, Coach Mitchell. This is Brandon Benson from East Texas with the Tiger Broadcast. Can you talk about, you know, in the first quarter, you put up 20 points against Alcorn State. Uh, how was it uh, putting those points? Uh, what did you see from the defense that allowed you to put up uh, big numbers in the first quarter? We thought we could run the ball against those guys, and uh, we had to win at our back, so I was going to take an early shot, some shots in terms of uh, passing the ball against them. Uh, we thought our corners were, our our receivers were a little better than, than their corners, so we uh, made some plays, and unfortunately we missed the PAT, or it would have been 21 to nothing, but uh, defense played well. They got us the ball back where we could be in a rhythm after we scored the first time, so it allowed the offense to come right back on the field, and it allowed us to be aggressive with play calling. And uh, fortunately enough for us, we made some plays. Coach, talk about um, you know coming in this week against uh, Texas Southern, one of the top defenses in the conference. Uh, you was able to put up uh, close to uh, over 400 yards uh, in the last game against Alcorn State. Uh, what is it going to take uh, to have that same type of performance here in Houston? Well, every game is different. Uh, we were able to run the ball some and also pass the ball against uh, Alcorn. Texas Southern is a total different football player. You're talking total different players, uh, football team and, and, and individual players, uh, total different staff. Uh, certain people like to uh, make you be one-dimensional. So uh, it's going to take a concerted effort for us to go out and 
and work extremely hard starting tomorrow. Both teams are pretty much on the same schedule in terms of uh, what the NCAA has taken away. Uh, we, we both practice on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursdays. Uh, so it's going to be a similar type uh, team from from that standpoint, managerial-wise. But uh, we have to go out and we have to eliminate some of the turnovers and we have to play better on special teams, which has also been an Achilles heel of those guys. Uh, so uh, we just got to prepare and, and hopefully uh, get the best from our players. Thanks a lot, Coach, and good luck on Saturday. Thanks. Coach Perrin Keys here from the Advocate. How are you? I'm good, Perrin. Yourself? Uh, I'm okay. I just uh, I'm I'm not trying to be funny when I ask this question, but what do you remember of last year's game, and did anything good uh, come out of that game? Yes, I, re I remember a lot of it. I I think uh, we actually may have scored first. Maybe I don't remember that, but I know they scored by beating my left guard inside and second. Uh, the quarterback and picking up the ball and running a few yards, uh, maybe no more than two or three yards for a touchdown. Uh, and then they also, we didn't cover a tight end. Uh, they hit they hit the tight end and he had a, made a big gain. It was a great catch by the tight end. Uh, we had them backed up. Uh, so I, I felt good playing that team. That was last year. This is a whole different ball game. It's 0-0 zero, zero now. Hopefully we can come out and, and establish some things, but it won't be easy. I can guarantee you that. Uh, they have two of the top running backs in, in this conference. They can pound the ball, and we are uh, limited there in terms of defensive linemen. So uh, we definitely have to somehow try to control uh, the ball game, and uh, that's something we haven't done a whole lot in, in terms of controlling the clock. But... To, to let those guys be able to constantly run the ball will not be a good thing. Offensively and special team-wise, we have to play a much better football game. Thank you, Coach. Coach, you talked a little bit about, uh, you know, looking for that back-to-back -back victory for the first time, but even without that, you still find yourself uh, tied in the loss column with three other teams in the West. Talk up a little bit about that Western Division race and how crazy it's going to be down the stretch. Well, it's exciting. You know, we don't have to do uh, what they do in the NFL now that they've, they've got that ability to switch games if they have games televised that they know no one's going to watch the last month of the season. Well, we don't have that issue right here. Every game is going to be exciting. Uh, every team really needs their home fans to come out and support that that uh, home team uh, to try to prevent some type of false starts or whatever it may be for the opponents. And as a uh, as a road team, every team needs their uh, their fan support to follow them, to to give them that that feeling that that we're there for you, and also to help the gate of the visiting teams. Do you talk to your players at all about the about the division race or, you know, just how tight it is? I mean, obviously they know, they can see the standings, but do you talk to them directly about what it's going to take to to, uh, to try and, and stay in that race? We mentioned that briefly, but we, sp we will spend the majority of our time talking about our opponent, Texas Southern. Uh, that's what's important. We can't afford to have the mistakes that we've had uh, this year that have cost us the games that, that we've, uh, we've played, and we still have to work with our kickers to get better because we still have uh, three games left to improve upon uh, the, the work that they've done so far. You talked about being able to kind of control the clock a little bit, uh, and Zeke is, is certainly going to be a big cog in that uh, with, his, with his ability to run the, run the football. Well, our, he will. Our offensive line have to uh, do a tremendous job of coming off the ball. I think Texas Southern, those guys do a great job of uh, getting penetration. So we're going to have to try to take advantage of some of the things that we think we may be able to do them in the running game as well as uh, in the passing game. But, but I know those guys don't feel good about what happened this past weekend. I know Coach Ramsey and the other uh, members of his coaching staff will have those guys ready uh, to play football game, especially uh, at home. Any final questions for Coach Mitchell from Southern University? <laughs> Coach, we appreciate the time.
time. Uh, good luck at TSU this weekend, and we will talk to you next Monday. Thank you. Thank you. That brings us to Texas Southern Coach Kevin Ramsey. Is Coach Ramsey on the call? Yes, I am. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. Uh, a tough loss for you guys up at Itabina over the weekend. If you could kind of summarize that game, and then you host Southern coming to town uh, on Saturday. If you could talk a little bit about the Jaguars, and then we'll open it up for questions. Well, I mean, you know, we went in the valley, and uh, you know, my hats off to those guys on that streak, and you know, to come out with a with a win in their homecoming. Uh, you know, it was uh, when I got the stats in my hands, it was it was overwhelming of our offensive performance, which you know it was like we didn't show up. You know, they they uh, you know they shut our running game down. Uh, you know, we we didn't move the ball up front. We didn't protect and. Uh, it was like we was playing 86 bears out there. That was very disappointing. And then, uh, you know, defensively, I mean, uh, the first time in my career where you hold a team to a total of uh, 101 yards and come out with a loss and still, you know, with the one touchdown, we had a chance. I mean, the ball goes right through our linebacker's hands. Uh, he had it, and, uh, you know, it was a touchdown catch that could have easily been an interception. So, um uh, you know, we have to really keep our defensive guys' heads up to, to, to really fight through that, that loss. And, uh, you know, again, uh, with, with our teams, you know, we had a bad snap again over a guy's head that put two points on the board. But, but look, again, I, I just commend uh, Coach Morgan and those guys coming off uh, with the W because at, at the end of the day, hey, that's what it's about. It's, it's about the win. And, uh, you know, this week, this Jaguar team, uh, you know, stuff got those guys rolling. Uh, you know, they, uh, the, the efficiency of what, what he's doing with his quarterbacks and that offense, that West Coast uh, style of offense, uh, you know, it's, it, it's some uh, weapons there. And, you know, it's not the same team we played a year ago. You know, defensively, they're, they're flying around to the football. You know, they're one of the top teams in, uh, in all of America when it comes to uh, defending uh, the pass and pass efficiency. Uh, I think they only gave up three touchdown passes on the year. And, uh we, you know, we 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 back home, and this, you know, uh, you know, it's a, uh, it's our, our last home game at Del Mar, and you know, this is uh, for our seniors, and uh, overall for the response of this ball club bouncing back, particularly often. We'll open it up for questions for Coach Ramsey from Texas Southern University. Coach Ramsey, good morning. This is Brandon Benson with the Tiger Broadcast. A tough game on last Saturday playing in uh, Mississippi Valley. Uh, from your perspective, can you tell us uh, what was the turning point in that football game? Well, I mean, you know, the turning point was all the way to the end. You know, we had a chance to, you know, regardless of the walls and us not moving the football at all, uh, we, you know, we had two shots. And we, you know, we, we called the timeouts. We had the three and outs, the three and outs, the three and outs to – to give the offense a chance, and, you know, even that last drive, we had plenty of time to, to get it down uh, in the end zone and didn't. So, you know, that was the ending point of that, coming up short on the, on the short edge. But, uh, hey, uh, we, 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 we got to get back to, you know, being us and, and moving the football and having a run game and, and moving it, period, pass and run. Was, like I said before, set down the staff, and that was the point that was uh, very disappointing. And then defensively, we can't. You know, we, we always will have our, you know, we'll look back and say, hey, what could it be for us to win it? And, uh, you know, even defensively with holding them to 101 yards, we had our hands on the ball in the end zone on the one touchdown that they did have. Coach, also, you get, you're hitting the practice field on this week. You have Southern coming into town on Saturday. Uh, what are you going to be working on to uh, contain that the Southern Jaguars offense uh, this past weekend they was able to uh, – Moved the ball pretty well against uh, Alcorn State. Well, I mean, hey, you know, in that offense, it could be big play and hit, and you know, they made some big plays, and uh, you know, they kind of built on that. And, you know, they give, uh, you know, their their variety of uh, you know formations and, and and what with what they do with the young freshman quarterback, and and of course the the kid we sent the uh, seen a year ago, he he played in big ball games for him as well. Uh, you know, it's about us being us. And, you know, us on defense, it's about changing the line of scrimmage up front and uh, causing havoc, and, and we got to be a great tackling football team. We tackle well and, and fly around, it gives us a chance. Well, thanks a lot, Coach, and uh, good luck on Saturday, and we'll talk to you soon. All right. 
Coach, this is Taryn Keyes from the uh, Advocate newspaper. We're here at Baton Rouge. How are you? All right. Uh, look, uh, again, I'm not trying to be funny, but Coach, have you ever been in your in your entire career? Have you ever been a part of a team that's done so well on defense, leads the conference in defense and, and rushing, and, and just not uh, had the fortune come your way like like you had this year? Well, no, to answer the question, no, but uh, I have been around the game long enough and, and saw, you know, great defenses and great teams, and, uh, you know, the end result is the W. It is winning, and, uh, well, we lost some close ones. Uh, you know, we've been in we've been in ball games and been, been right in games, and, uh, you know, and uh, you know, one thing about our kids, they, they have been responding. Uh, you know, our, our approach is still our approach. I mean, you know, you know, on defense, you violate three things. You violate your eyes, you violate your hands, or you violate your feet. And that's, you know, we, we, we still try to improve on that. And, and then, you know, offensively, we just got to continue to pull and punch and, and, and be consistent along with what we got on our teams. But to answer your question again, uh, you know, it, it's uh, that's why they say this game is so much like life. You know, I mean, when you got – when the brakes works against you, you got to pull more steam. You got to pour more steam, or it really would be a, a overflow, and it'll it, it, it carry in on you. Uh, also, can you kind of just kind of speak to? Uh, I'm sure you've gone over this many times, but can you, can you speak to uh, Marquise Jackson and what he does and what you guys try to get accomplished up front? Well, I mean, you know, up front is, is, is they are the tempo setters of uh, of our defense, and you know, I, I tell the guys all the time, the defensive line. Really, the tempo setters of the of the team, and uh, you know we, and, and Marquise has been causing a lot of havoc. I mean, you know it, he really has improved on uh, you know how he plays the run. You know, get in there as a three technique and give us his best shot. And you know even times when we play him in our over layer, uh, where we line him up at a you know at a linebacker stack position, uh, you know he has uh, linebacker type skills. So. Uh, and, and, you know, that that really helps out our secondary, primary our linebackers. It creates downhill uh, angles for our linebackers to run. Um, and also, Coach, you, I, I know you just uh, touched on this uh, just a minute ago, but also uh, your rushing attack being so successful as it has been all year. What what was, uh, what was <laughs> again, not to be funny, but what was going on last week where you just got, you guys couldn't get it going? Well, it was, no, it was, it was just, the blocking, the essence of offense is blocking. We we didn't block. We you know we didn't block at the second and third level. You know our backs, they, they you know they, they they come and they come to run hard. And uh, I mean when you when, when people are blowing your your, your offensive line back and offensive linemen are not at the linebacker level and in some instances uh, in the secondary downfield, we gotta we we, we just gotta get back to to blocking downfield, basic and in, in, you know in our blocking scheme and. Uh, you know, we 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 had some. Uh, we we that that was our biggest role, not changing line of scrimmage up front. Just like defensively, it's uh, you know you, you got to move it up front, and even you got to protect the uh, the quarterback uh, to allow him uh, to 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 get in the there uh, with high feet all the time. Thank you, coach. Appreciate it. All right. Final questions for Coach Ramsey from Texas Southern. Coaches, always, we appreciate the time this morning. Uh, 